What's up YouTube universe? I'm Dash, and today's video is for the SEPTA fans. You ever want to know something about SEPTA that you didn't already know? Well today is the day where you learn those secrets, but before we get into those spicy details, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the Dash official as we'll be doing a video every week, and maybe join a virtual transit center discord server. There'll be a link in the description for you. Now topping the list of things that you didn't already know is that the SEPTA lettered routes used to be a very important part of the SEPTA bus system. You see, back before SEPTA existed, the city of Philadelphia was served by this transit company called the Philadelphia Rapid Transit Company. Now this company primarily operated trolley service until the 1940s in which the Philadelphia Transit Company would take over the operations. During this time, the tides started to change as more and more bus routes were created. But back then, since the trolley lines primarily operated the system, they used letters to to identify the bus service instead, as in Route 2 would be a trolley line, but Route B will be a bus. It wasn't until the 1950s where the overlap began and trolley lines will become bus routes. The 42 trolley will become the 42 bus, and slowly over time, newly created bus routes will begin receiving numbers instead of letters. By the 1960s, when SEPTA finally took over, two PTC lettered bus routes would be merged into a numbered bus route but they would still operate buses. In the 1980s, SEPTA would double down on this and begin changing bus routes from letters into numbers, with the last changes happened in the 1990s. Simply put, the letter routes that exist today are relics from the past and nothing more. Fact number two, SEPTA operates more of their original streetcar lines than any other system in the entire country. In the United States overall, transit companies discontinued traditional streetcar service in favor of diesel buses. But SEPTA's predecessor, the Philadelphia Transit Company, did not do this. By the time SEPTA took over in 1964, there were still 13 streetcar lines still operating the streets of Philadelphia and two streetcar lines in Delaware County, making for a total of 15. This was stated case until the 1980s, when SEPTA would do massive service cuts throughout the system, taking a number of of lines from 15 to 10. In 1992, all lines that did not use a subway surface tunnel in Center City will be temporarily operating as bus, bringing the total number of lines down to seven. At this point, the Muni in San Francisco would officially operate more lines as they had eight of their original lines. But then, in 2005, by some stroke of luck, set the restored service on the 15, which will bring the total number of original lines back up to eight. In San Francisco, which would have originally had been tied, this continued the E and merged the K with the T, bringing the total number of original lines in San Francisco down to six. Muni actually has eight streetcar lines total, so the total number of lines is still the same. This change made SEPTA the agency with the most original streetcar lines in operation in the United States. Here's the third fact. No, not C, but you'll get that later. SEPTA currently has the oldest livery in the state of Pennsylvania. What does that mean? Well, the current livery dates back to 1996, introduced on the Nabby and American Icarus buses, as well as then overhauled Neoplan buses. This version, introduced on the Nabby buses, was only used on the Nabbies from 1996 to 2002. But there was a different version without the black windows and the SEPTA logo on the back window, which was used on overhaul Neoplan buses, as well as all future bus orders starting in 1996. SEPTA's current livery is 26 years old as I speak, which predates the oldest livery otherwise in the state of Pennsylvania by two years. Catabus and State College, for example, has been using the same livery that they have now since 1998. And if not for SEPTA, this actually would have been the oldest livery in the state. So SEPTA, it's time to modernize. If Altoona can modernize their livery, SEPTA can too. Fourth fact, SEPTA is the only agency in the entire state of Pennsylvania that has not operated any Gillig buses. Well, except for agencies that don't even operate full-size buses. I mean, this isn't a fact that no one knew because everyone knew that SEPTA never operated Gillig's, but they're the only one who never even tried them in the entire state. Even our closest neighbors in Pottstown operate Gillig buses. Even State College, Catabus, a system that prides itself in operating New Flyer CNG buses has a small fleet of Gillies. And now, finally, fact number last. SEPTA and PACO, which both serve Philadelphia, are the only agencies based in Pennsylvania that operate heavy rail and commuter rail service. That's right, the Market Frankfurt Line and the Broad Street Line, as well as PACO and the Norristown High Speed Line, are the only heavy rail lines in the entire state of Pennsylvania. SEPTA Region Rail is still the only commuter rail service that you're going to get as well. I mean, Pennsylvania does have tourist railroads, but that's not the same as a commuter railroad. There's also Amtrak, but that's not based in Pennsylvania, so that's point two for SEPTA. Fact check me if you may, but no other agency the entire state operates heavy rail lines even circumstantially. Oh, you think Pittsburgh does? Nope. Allentown doesn't even have rail service. So if anyone ever tells you that SEPTA is lacking in subway and elevator service, you can respond by saying that SEPTA is the only agency in the entire state of Pennsylvania to even have heavy rail service. And that was five things about SEPTA that you did not know. Did you notice that instead of me saying fact number three, I said fact number C? Did you learn anything else today? Let me know in the comments. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Peace out.